Hi guys, it's Jean here and if you followed me from the start then you know once in a while I'll post these I guess mental awareness videos. Um, I haven't done much but I do hope to do more of these. Um, I have been struggling with depression for many years now and I really hate using the word depression because I feel like it's one of those words that just gets thrown around a lot describing individuals that you know are not normal, that are different or that are seeking attention which which is not and it shouldn't be a illness and it shouldn't be an individual battle I think it should be an awareness of a community and everyone goes through it differently like sometimes you know you have your good days while other times you get stuck in this spiral of emotions that you know mentally and physically fuck you up and it kind of questions your existence so for me personally, I think it's an ongoing struggle and I think it's me trying to figure out what my role is in this world and whether my existence has any significance. You know, is there a reason why I'm here? Is there a purpose? And don't get me wrong, there are times where I'm fine and then other times something will just trigger where it will just be a spiral going down to this, you know, really dark place. and. A lot of times I'll be okay after a while, but this time around, especially the past year or two, and I haven't been shy about it as well. So if you've watched my previous videos, you'll know I mentioned, you know, I've been having a really tough year. And I think it's because this time around, I don't know what to do because the more I run, the more it hurts me and that I can't really run away from it because it's always you know around me and if you like my closest family and friends I'm sure like they know the whole like you know everything because I I share things like, I don't like to keep things bottled in because I know at the end of the day it will hurt me a lot more and I don't know what my next step is so I don't know what I'll do if I keep it in me and you know I'm going to be completely honest for me the hardest thing right now is having to I guess lose the relationship with Kelly and I losing our relationship with our in-laws not just his parents but with his siblings as well and you know a lot of people that know us will probably think oh why are you guys are so close but I think when you build relationships with people and you get so close to them that you see them for their true selves and you kind of hope for the best in people but when you start feeling like you have to set your feelings aside for them to help support them or you know be there for them those feelings they don't go anywhere they don't disappear they just get bottled up inside you that the more you keep doing it eventually it gets full and something will trigger something and then you just go through this meltdown and you kind of hope that they're there to support you but unfortunately that didn't happen and it was disappointing because it doesn't matter how many times you reach out. It just seemed like my value, like how I valued them as a family was different to how they valued me and it felt like my contribution was just for their convenience. And there was a quote on Instagram that I saw that is so true and it was something along the lines of, you know, people are loyal people aren't loyal to you they're loyal to their needs of you and when their needs change so does their loyalty and I don't know that's what it kind of felt like so but yeah this video isn't about me hating on them it's about us and it's about us moving on and letting go you know being grateful that there are people in our lives that do care about us and I feel so guilty because I spent you know a lot of times trying to be happy and loved by these people where I've alienated people like my friends and family that do actually care and I know it's going to be hard to let go because there'll always be family events or gatherings that you know we it's not like we don't want to go we still want to attend them because we still care about you know his extended family but it's going to be hard because you know just because you don't see what's going on or you don't want to doesn't mean that it's not there like it hurts me even hearing about them that I feel like you know every time we take one step forward we're taking two steps back so anyways this awareness video isn't for me to brag or spread hate. I don't even care if I don't get any views. Like it would be great if you know I knew other people were going through something similar but I guess this is more for me to look back when I need to know who I am. So who am I? I am an ambivert if that's how you pronounce it. I'm someone in between an introvert and an extrovert because 
I can comfortably speak in front of a large crowd and, you know, participate in team events and things like that. But I also like to do things myself and, you know, just be homebody nowadays, especially the older I get. I feel very nervous and on edge when I'm in crowded places, especially like festivals or anything that's so crowded that, you know, you're sardine together and people are bumping you. I actually start to get aggravated and full of rage. So I guess it depends on the situation, but I think it's best that, you know, I'd rather just stay home than feel that way. I am an empath, a severe empath apparently. I know like anytime I hear someone with a problem I feel like you know I put myself in their shoes as if it was my problem I have to help them fix it which is probably why I can't watch the news for too long especially when you hear stories like you know about terrorism and things like that when there are people that you know can't defend for themselves. I always feel like I get heavily invested in my emotions that I just can't watch for too long. And even birthday, like even happy things like birthday celebrations and things like that, I get so super excited about it that I want to help get involved as if it was one of my events. I don't know, I always put other people's feelings first. Like, I would rather they laugh, even if it's at me or thinking that I'm stupid, than, you know, see them upset or hurt even though sometimes it may mean hurting me in the process. And I think when I when you're around someone for so long, I start absorbing their personalities and the way they think, which is probably why like I've had really good relationships with all my bosses at work, so yeah. I have a borderline personality disorder. So pretty much the way my therapist would describe it was, you know, if you're normal, your emotions are like this. If you have bipolar, your emotions kind of go like this. When you're happy and sad, but it's like constant. But when you have borderline personality disorder, your emotions are kind of like this. So, yep, that is pretty much me. Like, within a space of 10 minutes, I can be extremely happy to extremely pissed off to then be upset and then joking around again. So, I feel like I'm always trying to please people. Like, I feel so uncomfortable inside taking compliments, so I kind of joke around it. However, I feel like I need some sort of validation that I'm doing the right thing. Otherwise, I get so paranoid and start questioning things. I'm also really easy to bribe. Gina, want a donut? Gina, want to go Kmart? Yeah, sure. And I get so excited that once it's over, I feel worthless and used. And then I feel upset at myself that I've fallen in the same trap over and over again. I need to feel wanted. Like, me being there is appreciated and that I am valued for who I am. Like, don't we all? And I need to feel loved. You know, I know this is going to sound greedy and selfish, but I especially need to feel loved from Kyung, my husband, because, you know, we've been through a lot together and I want to know that it was all worth Worth it, but also because he's not really an affectionate person. I guess he's never really had that growing up. And Kang and I, we we're on different schedules. So I work during the day, he works at night. So we don't really see each other, you know, often during the day. So, you know, I get so frustrated, you know, missing him that when I see him, sometimes I wouldn't say I'm aggressive, but I can get a bit rough. So, you know, I'd want to go and give him a hug, but every time I do that, I feel like he's always taking a step back, like I'm about to hit him, and it really makes me upset because I feel like, you know, I've missed him for the whole day, and I just want to give him a big hug, but he takes it as if I'm, you know, violent towards him, but, and then that makes you really upset that, you know, I feel like he doesn't love me because of that. So it really hurts. I'm also very detailed, which is probably why I tend to blabber on and talk too much because I kind of get sidetracked like I am now and why my videos go for so long. But I'm a very detailed person and I pay a lot of attention into detailing, which isn't always a strength. It could also be a weakness as well because, you know, I read things or see things differently. For example, you know, when you organize a catch up with someone, are you asking or are you telling? Because the difference is when you ask someone to catch up, you're implying that, you know, whenever you're free, whenever I'm free, we can catch up and see how things are going. Whereas, you know, if you ask someone, you know, hey, we're going to catch up on this day. Do you want to come or do you want to come on this day? I kind of feel like, well, you're telling me to come because you've already made plans regardless of whether I'm available or not. So you're kind of just, you know, hitting two birds with one stone in a way. 
and I don't know, a lot of people may not think anything about it, but it kind of goes back to value, like, you know, valuing my relationship and how they see me um, as a person. And it's also the same when you ask someone now and they say, oh, no, I'm busy, I've got things to do. But next minute you see on Snapchat that they're at home doing their nails. It kind of makes you think, like, well, clearly you're not a priority in their life, so... I'm not the perfect role model, but I'm not a bad influence either. You know, I've done a lot of crazy things in my life, but I've learned from them and it's gotten me to where I am today. Like, I know my family in particular likes to compare and say, you know, oh, so-and-so's son goes to this uni, so-and-so's daughter, you know, has this high-paying job where she gets to travel, or this person has this big house. And I don't condone half the stuff I did, but I am proud of who I am and where I am today. And, you know, if I'm able to share that with people so they don't have to do it and they can, you know, make their own opinions, then I'm happy for that. Like, if you're looking for a role model that will show you how to be successful, you know, in school, how to get into a uni with a scholarship, how to get a good high paying job, how to get a big house, then, you know, good luck with that because chances are it's a facade for like an unhappy life. Because I think teaching someone that, you know, this is what you need to be successful is wrong and you should be teaching someone to be successful with what they have and how to be happy and show compassion. And I'm also honest. I treat everyone the same. I don't care who you are. Respect is earned, not given. Sometimes I'll just say whatever's on my mind, even if it sounds ridiculously stupid. And if I have a problem with someone and it really bothers me, I'll tell them. Because you're at least giving them the respect to know what they're doing wrong to you, that you know you can both work it out together. So yeah, that is who I am. I guess it's really hard for me to explain you know, what I'm going through and what's going in my head without, I guess, them and me knowing, understanding who I am. So I guess by saying it out, it just makes it a lot clearer for me if I ever need to go back and, I guess, realise who I am. But yeah, that's it. Bye.